Hi and welcome to this tutorial on Adobe Photoshop. In part 5 we're going to be looking at how to import your own imagery into Photoshop. So bringing in a photograph or a drawing or a scan. Um, we're going to be looking at having multiple files open and how you can work between them, how you can move objects between files or copy them. And also I'm going to touch on uh, basic transformations again. Uh, so let's hop on over to Photoshop. Uh, this is what we've been building, this cheeky little gherkin. Um, for your project, um, we're actually building a poster, so I'm going to actually make a new file that has the correct settings of the poster file. I'm going to leave this little gherkin guy open because he's going to be part of my final poster. So to make a new file, I'm going to go File New, and according to your project, you can choose whatever settings you like. The project that we're working on is uh, a poster, so it's going to be a print output. And we're going to be working in millimetres, so I'm just going to change the size here to millimetres. And then I'm going to input uh, the width, which is 250, and then the height, which is 370. When you're reading a size, 250 by 370, the first measurement is always, always, always the width. Um, the resolution is already correct at 300 pixels per inch. The colour mode is correct at RGB. The other option in there, um, which is common to use, would be CMYK. I like to work at a high resolution and with the largest uh, range of colours. I can always downgrade either one later, but it's really, really hard to go the other way, if not impossible. And I've got artboards turned off. So I'm going to click on Create, and this will give me my new poster file. So this is... Um, larger than an A4 but not as big as an A3 sheet of paper so we'll be able to print it out later on A3 and then trim off the white excess border. The first thing I want to do is save my file so I'll go file save as and I'm going to call it the Gherkin poster. You could give it a name that makes sense to you. Make sure embed color profile is on and click save and now I need to start building my poster file. So um, I usually wouldn't just start straight off in Photoshop. I would usually start with sketching, concept sketching, then developments and come up with a final design and then use this digital tool to build it. Um, so I have one thing that I can use. I've got this little digital chap here. I can use him in my um, poster. And I've also done a sketch. So I'm going to open the sketch file. So this time go file open. And uh, I've got a Photoshop file here, which I've um, I've taken a photograph on my phone. I have sent it to um, myself. You could do that via on Mac. You use AirDrop. Um, if you're on a Windows PC, I recommend emailing it to yourself um, and then saving the file somewhere in your project folder. So this is my Photoshop project folder. I'm going to open that file up. And here is the photograph I took. So you can see it's not straight, the lighting is pretty poor, and it's a pretty quick sketch. I've just got some doodles around the outside and a weird little gherkin guy. So you um, might need to do some processing of your image before you can actually start using it. So I'm going to turn this or rotate the entire canvas. To do that I'm going to go up to image, uh, image rotation, and then I'm going to go 90 degrees counterclockwise which will just flip in like that. You can see it's unsaved, so I'm just going to go File, Save. And um, notice also that it has just got the one background layer. Uh, what I want to do here is be able to cut different parts out to use them on my poster. The first thing I want to get is the Gherkin chap here himself. So I'm going to use the Polygonal Lasso tool. I'm just going to zoom in a wee bit. And I'm just going to quickly Go around here. So I'm not going too close, I'm not trying to get a perfect selection or anything. So he's going to have that sort of hand cut look to him. That's fine, I'm not going for perfection at this point in time, we're just going for done. Um, so the selection is made here, it's on the background layer. I'm going to push Ctrl C. And then I'm going to come over to my Gherkin poster, my new blank file, and push Control Command V. And it's going to paste my a copy of that selection on a new layer into this file. So I'm going to save this file. 
Now there's that warning. First time I'm saving it with artwork in it. Would you like to maximise compatibility? Yes. And away we go. So that's my first little object here. Uh, I'd now like to bring in this gherkin and see if we can combine the two things. So this gherkin is on not one layer, but multiple layers. How do I move layers that are already pre-existing? If I want to move the whole layer, so if I've got the, um, the green of the gherkin here, if I want to move that, you can click and drag from here, not on the text, but just in the grey area, click and drag, go up to the name of the file, wait for it to pop to the front, come down, and you can drop it there, and that will work, but I've got lots of layers, and I don't want to do them all at once and then have to realign them, so I'm going to go Ctrl or Command Z, undo that, come back over here, I want to drag all of these at once, select them all, drag, up, down, drop, so now we have a happy little gherkin over here, but moving them around, I just know that I'm going to lose bits, or not um, select everything properly, so I've got all of these, and I want to join them together, but still have access to the individual layers, or we can group them together, so if I come down here, uh, we've got a little folder icon, and it says make a new group, it's got a little twirly icon there, so you can twirl it open and shut, and you see all of our gherkin layers are currently inside that group, and we'll call the group gherkin group, so I know what's happening there, and I'll call this one sketch. I want to make this gherkin roughly the same size as the other one. So I've got this whole group selected, and I'm going to use a free transform, Control or Command T, and it'll put the handles around it. I'm going to hold Shift while I move this and maneuver it. Do a little bit of turning there. So if I put my cursor out past the corner, we get a turny turning arrow, so you can rotate. If I hold the corner, I can resize it, including squishing and squashing it. If I don't want to squish and squash, but if I do want to retain the correct proportions, hold Shift, and that will work a lot better for you. So I'm getting it roughly the same size, and I'm just rotating. Trying to line the eyes up. There you go, and once I'm happy with that, press enter, tick up here, or double click on the gherkin itself. Now what's happening here, I can't see my sketch, so what I want to do is um, bring the sketch to the front. So I'll click on the sketch layer, click and drag, and you see how it changes the preview? That would be into the group, and that would be above the group, so I want above the group. And now I want to be able to partially see through this sketch layer so that I can see the colours from the Gherkin group. Uh, a couple of ways of achieving that. I can change the opacity here. So you can start to see both of them at once. Make quite a cool little animation maybe. So if I put that at about 85%. The other thing we can look at using is the blending modes over here in the layers panel. Dissolve doesn't do, not terribly useful, but these ones here will darken things, the next set will lighten things, and then we've got different ways of using light and combining layers. You never know quite what you're going to get, so it's worth having a look through here to see if there's anything that will work for you. So this lighten one has worked quite well, and I can move my sketch around so I get a really interesting sort of look to my design. Maybe I'll make my sketch a bit smaller. So let's get a bit more of this. Uh, get a bit more of this detail at the end here. And I'll bring those up. Cool. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, so we get some really interesting effects. Now if I like the idea of that, I can actually join these things together, this Gherkin group and the sketch. So that's what I'm going to do. Select them both, and I'm going to come down here to the little folder icon, click that, and now we've got um, 
You may do a convert. If I open it up, you can see I've got a sketch in the Gherkin group. And if I open the Gherkin group up, to get to individual things. Cool. So with the Mega Gherkin group, which is both the sketch and the Gherkin, I'm going to duplicate that. Control or Command J. So now we've got another one. It's made the shadow darker. And change the colours slightly because now they're layered on top of each other. If I use the Move tool, I can. get some crazy effects happening. So that's quite cool. Let's keep the, um, the top one at that size. Let's go for the next one down, which is this one. I'm just toggling the visibility on and off to see which one I'm targeting. And let's make it slightly smaller. Control or Command T. Make it slightly smaller. Double click to accept the changes. Go to the next one down, Control or Command T, slightly small. Next one down, Control or Command T. Let's speed this out a bit more. Just so I can see all of their cheesy faces. And I can change the colours of them as well. So a really quick way to change colours of things is to use an adjustment layer. These are a special type of layer that Photoshop creates and they basically a set of recipes that will adjust whatever is happening beneath. So the top one I'm going to leave is that of the green and then I want these other ones to be different colours of the rainbow. So this is the second one on the top. I'm going to come down here and there's a little icon like a Manish Tart circle in black and white. Click on that and it gives you a menu of different adjustment layer types you can choose. I'm going to click on solid colour and it kind of destroys things for a minute but don't panic. Um, just pick the colour you'd like your gherkin to be. I'm going to choose purple. Okay. And it has given me a solid layer of purple. Um, I want the purple to only apply to Mega Gherkin Group Copy 2, the second one down. So I am going to hold Alt or Option and put my cursor just between these two items and click. And what that did was clip the colour just to this layer here. And we can see now it's applying just that second one and its shadow but it's like solid purple, we can't see the face or any of the detail. So what am I going to do? Well, I can come back up here to the adjustment, uh, sorry, the layer blending mode and play around until I get an effect I like. So there we go, cheeky eyes popping out. If it's too strong, you can use the opacity command to just knock it back a bit. I quite like it, quite bright. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that. For the next one down, so this is the second bottom one. Come down, grab solid colour adjustment layer. This one can be orange. Let's pick a nice bright colour. You can come back in and change the colours later. So if you want to change this orange, you can double click on the orange and you can go in and edit it. Hold Alt or Option and click between the two layers to clip it. See, it's clipped. And it's affecting only the layer beneath it. This happens to be a group. I'm just going to click on this one. See, I used color burns. So I'm going to click on the orange one. Set that also to color burn. Down to about 70%. And I'm going to repeat that step for the last one. It's a new adjustment layer. Solid color blue for this one. Here. Hold the option click to clip it, set it to color green, and down to about 7%. Save my file. So now I have four happy little gherkins um, repeating themselves up the page, and I'm combining a photograph of a sketch I took and some artwork that I made inside Photoshop itself. 
what this post says about me, I am not sure, but if you've ever wanted to know how to make a gherkin, now you do.